Oh, hey there. Uh, welcome to Prague. Um, uh, we went, we came by Dresden, and I'm really disappointed that I forgot to take you guys with me because Dresden is absolutely stunning. But we're in Prague now, and we're in the grounds of the Prague Castle, which you can see the top of just over there. We're going to head around there soon, going to have a look at it, going to wander around the gardens and stuff for a while. Um, and then we'll get there and it'll be fun. <clears throat> Obviously I'm a little bit tired, I had a wee bit of a nap on the on the bus this afternoon. Um, it is hot, 35 degrees or something at the moment, but um, yeah, she's warm. Um, which lends itself to those mid-afternoon naps and stuff as well. But um, yeah, we're going to wander around, we're going to have a look, see what's up. So just up and walked up, uh, we've gone to the bathroom and walked up some the stairs. That's lovely little courtyard. Some nice grass and some hedges and some more nice building. It's quite lovely. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we're heading into the palace grounds proper now. And it's mainly used, well, it's still in use now as sort of the parliamentary centre of Prague. But it was saying like they'd have their own supply chains and stuff coming through here. They'd have everything they needed within the walls that we just walked through. There. So, and that it was created yeah, so that the rich didn't have to live with the poor, basically. So the royalty did not have to mix it with the commoners. Um, but it is something that's worth 10 beaches behind the stairs still. And. Yeah, it's um, she's quite cool. You right, Uncle Chop Chop? Looks like Chopper Reed. He doesn't. He does. He doesn't. He tries to say that he doesn't, but can I show you? Yeah. Does he or does he not look like Chopper Reed? No. You know, old Uncle Chop Chop. Oh, apparently, we're not going that way. But yeah, we'll keep wandering around and I'll keep showing you cool shit. So I might get in trouble for this, but this is the inside of the San Vitus Cathedral. Isn't it just absolutely stunning? I genuinely think I might be in love with this place. Especially for a church. Like, again, not religious, but something you do have to give the church is their architectural brilliance and just how pretty they can make things. I guess it makes it a more attractive thing for God or whatever. But yeah, just absolutely stunning in here. I don't think that um, this video will do it justice, but hopefully it does. Good morning everyone, day two in Prague. Um, we're off on a bike tour, so I'll try and get some footage of that, but it's probably not likely. But I'll get some footage of some of the stops, um, at least, anyway. Um, needless to say, it's still hot as balls. Even Hurley Dooley thinks it's hot as balls. But, um, yeah. So we're gonna... We're, um, we're, we're taking some form of public transport into our bike tour as well, so... It's it's warm already. I think it's probably about 28 or something at the moment. So plans to get up to about 36 Celsius. So yeah, it's going to be warm. But um, we 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 get through it. So we roll one foot in front of the other and we make it to the end. And we're going to enjoy the trip along the way. So yeah, we're going to go do that. And I'll talk to you later. Here we are doing a, uh, a cycle tour of Prague. Uh, it'll take about <coughs> take about two hours or so, and we're going to learn a fair bit about the history. So we've just seen something called the Powder Tower, where they stored uh, gunpowder and stuff like that. And then there was a mosaic <coughs> with the history of Prague and uh, well, the history of the leadership of Prague, um, which was really quite pretty. But um, yeah, just going to going to cruise along and learn some more about Prague. Should be a good time. 
Just bouncing around checking now. We just saw the Estates Theatre, which is where Don Giovanni was was debuted. Um, Charles University there as well, and study here is free, which would be nice in general. <coughs> Watch for pedestrians in the crosswalk, but I do like to point out coming at you guys. Are, you guys are able to look to your left, you will see the uh, bottom of the Oh, excuse me. Can't hear you, bud. Yeah, you can hear me. Okay. And Adam's got a fire. Yeah. Of all of all the people, it had to be Adam. But yeah, really pretty city. Um, I might take a few more videos as we're going around. But like, even just looking around here, well, it's obviously built up and cars and stuff driving everywhere. But it's still like, the architecture and stuff is just so pretty and so different to. To everything that I'm used to, but yeah. Still on our bus tour. I'm just running around. Again, some really fucking cool, pretty buildings here. And we're about to learn about another one. It's 1942 written on the ground, so. It could mean any number of things. But we're about to find out. Yeah, but again, we're gathering just a little bit, make sure the water is clear. Pretty, pretty. So we're now at the main river that runs through Prague. Um, obviously, it's still, still on our wee bike tour, as you can see there. But um, I just want to show you the trip, but it's kind of quite nice. And again, take note of the architecture around and just how aesthetically pleasing it is. It is quite sunny. Makes me very, very happy. Very content to be here in Prague. Um, I mean, the river's a river. You see them in pretty much every major city. But it is interesting to have this little slide here. I'm not sure what the deal is with that. But makes it just that wee bit more of oh, an interesting thing cool, I guess yeah I love this city now the other thing about Prague is it has some of the best clubs in the world um, I'm definitely not a clubber I'm uh, not a fan of clubs anymore for old age but I just I don't have the energy for them and they're just not my vibe anymore so I probably won't have too much to show of that sort of side of things but it it does look like it would have been a lot of fun for me five years ago or so but yeah certainly not so much anymore in my in my old age I guess but yeah, just gonna keep on cruising through. We got a nice sweet park here. So apparently, it's a big thing to um to spank these babies. So there we go. But um, yeah, this is by uh, an artist named David Cherney or David Black, who um does these to show that kids are now raised by television instead of being raised as people. Well, yeah, you guys are ready. So, yeah. So this bit's going to be a little bumpy because we're on cobblestones. But, 
but I do want to make it as authentic as I can as I just die trying to get off the bike and the Lennon wall which I'm running I've just spent a fair bit of time. I already know some of the answer, and it makes me quite happy. Uh, do we have any Beatles fans here? Yes. I know these ones. All right. All right. Awesome. Uh, we've got we've quite a few. Yeah. We've got quite a few. Sometimes I ask the question, and really, there's no hands raised, and I'm like the only one who's like, I'm a big fan. Um, so yes, this is the famous John Lennon Wall, uh, the second most visited tourist site in all of Prague, believe it or not, after Prague Castle. Um, and really, this, this story goes back, uh, you know, when the Beatles were popular in the 1960s, uh, amongst other things, uh, rock and roll music uh, was outlawed. Um, so I'm, the Beatles never performed here. I'm not sure John Lennon actually ever came to Prague, uh, but he, when he was uh, shot and killed in New York City uh, in 1980, uh, after that, uh, art students here I decided to use his image uh, as sort of the symbol of uh, peace, love, uh, freedom of speech and expression, uh, kind of all the things that were, uh, again, had been outlawed. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, the regime was not happy, so they would paint over the wall. So, still on the bike tour. Seen some really cool stuff. We've just gotten out of the Jewish quarter. But um, the whole thing is just absolutely stunning. Our guide Owen down there, he's been fantastic. And it, it's interesting because it does seem a little bit like Christchurch in that it is almost completely flat, at least the places that we've gone and that we've cycled through have been really quite flat. So it's been, it's been quite nice. Um, yeah, so that has made it, made it quite, just that little bit more pleasurable, I guess. Um, the fact that we've just sort of ambled along and it's not been anything strenuous by any stretch, really. A couple of times we've had to get off and push our bikes because it's one way streets, but yeah, definitely nothing like that. Jimmy Choo. Do you need some shoes, Owen? Do you need some shoes? You got Jimmy Choo. Yeah, certainly all the Louis Vuitton and Louis Vuitton Cartier No, really? Yeah. Here we are in Old Town Square where we walked through last night. We were on our way to Cafe 80s. But now in the daylight it looks even more resplendent. Really, it is quite sunny. Okay, so I've finished my bike tour now. I'm back in the old town square, but I am on my way now to the Sex Machines Museum. Um, again, anybody who knows me knows that that's going to be very much of interest to myself. But I am back through in the middle of the square, not too far away from it. And I think hopefully if I've got enough time from there, I'm gonna go check out the KGB Museum. And back to the hostel for a bit, have a shower, maybe a swim, and then I'm out for a traditional Czech evening at about six o'clock, which is uh, about four and a half hours from now. So I'm hoping I've got enough time to fit in these two museums, and then we'll go from there. I think the travel time back to the um, back to the hostel might be the only issue uh, as part of that, but we'll see how we go and see how far we can get along. I may have to rush through the KGB. But, um, yeah, we'll see how we get on. Okay, so I've made it into the Sex Machines Museum. 
which proves to be, well, which will hopefully proves to be very interesting. And lovely start. Some very interesting artifacts to look forward to the machine side of it. Because, you know, that's me. But yeah. So walking through, I've kind of just had to point this out. <coughs> A whole bunch of old kinds of artifacts with their uses and whatnot down the side. That one makes me laugh, which is those right there. I guess it was before automation was really a thing. Well, that should be quite harder. All of this looks like a lot of fun and I might have to do some investing. But we'll see. So I've just had to stop and point something out here because this machine is actually also used today and I'm quite a big practitioner of it. Basically just a violet wand. Well, it is a violet wand. So the same as what we use nowadays and it's used for electrical simulation and more sensory sides of sexual being and, and elevating some senses as most electricity is used for in a sexual setting. But really, really interesting that it goes back. So, like this looks wonderful. I'll tell you what I would love to, I would love to um, grab some, some of these old antiques and put them to use myself, just to see how the differences of the sensations would be. And that's an interesting one there, because these are tens, which I am quite well versed in as well. Tens is a very, very good time. Yeah, electrostimulation. So, sorry, I'm just reading the, the notes on it. <coughs> that's what tens is. It's electrostimulation. And it's used quite a lot when, um, with muscle pains and stuff like that, um, in a more vanilla sense. And we've got some other boxes. More for your, for your femdom side, if you will. An air vibrator. Which is really interesting as well. There's lots of stuff in here that I already, that I didn't think would be in here. And I'm very, very happy to see it here. But we'll continue walking around and seeing what else is here. And seeing what else I've used before. So, just about another thing that is commonly used in BDSM practices, especially for um, sensory play, in an ancient Wartenberg wheel. You can see there the big spinny thing. Very much used with sensory deprivation if you've got someone who's blindfold or headphones on or things like that. So, they've only got touch as, as their main sense, and that's all they can feel is the Wartenberg wheel, usually spiky running <coughs> over their skin creates a really lovely um, feeling of it. But um, yeah, re really simple design on Wartenberg wheels, but very, very effective. Very, very fun to use. So as I'm walking through this, this Sex Machines Museum, I'm realizing more and more how much of it I actually have already sitting at home. It's, um, it's not facing that way, it's okay. Yeah, how much of it I actually have at home. So it's, it's really interesting seeing stuff I have at home in a museum. It makes me think that I should start my own museum. Because, yeah, a lot of it I own. But it's still really interesting to learn a little bit more about the history behind it and how it's came to be. Which is something that I don't have at home. But it makes it just that little bit more, a little bit more interesting. But like something like this is very modern. You wouldn't call that historical in any way shape or form but it has been practiced for thousands and thousands of years <clears throat> um, since the medieval days for, as a form of pleasure for people and people forget that this stuff has been around since the start of time because psychologically it, it works back then psychologically it's a turn on psychologically it makes you feel good so it would make complete sense to can you, to do those things if you get if you get hit, you get you can get a high, followed by a drop, which is of course sub drop, which people who know me should know about quite a bit. Um, but yeah, 
anyway for, for those who don't know me i do have a sex podcast so it kind of makes uh, makes sense that i know all this sort of stuff look at these cute little butt plugs erotic jewelry for videos and practices that yes butt plugs i'm not sure you use them for just videos and practices that's a really cool necklace i want that. that that's something that i would happily use on a regular basis i would say but yeah i'm pretty sure that's the whole museum it's never these ones are never large but they're always a wee bit interesting there's a few things here that i thought would be here that aren't here but can't win them all maybe i need to offer up some of my ones back at home to um to complete their collection and see how we get on from there but for now we're gonna head out we're gonna head to the kgb museum which will probably have some torture devices in that i'll that I'll probably use for sexy times, so we'll see how we go. So, uh, I know I said that I was going to the KGB Museum, but I stumbled across something else on the way. Uh, I stumbled across a Banksy exhibit, which I couldn't really uh, pass up. So I'm going to wander around here. It's going to be some really cool stuff. So there's Banksy here. Yeah. sale for millions but nobody really knows who Banksy is but yeah <laughs> large graffiti slogan some assembly required IKEA that's the but yeah we're gonna wander around here and, and sort of yeah obviously have a look and enjoy what Banksy gave to has given to the world should be a good time Hey team, so i um, been wandering around for a wee bit while, for a wee bit now. I found myself on the border of Newtown and Old Town in a place called, <coughs> sorry, uh, in a place called Wenceslas Square, um, which is widely known in Prague as sort of the place to come to for, uh, for demonstrations, public gatherings, and things like that. Of course, that acts as a border between Newtown and Old Town. Uh, named after St. Wenceslas, whose uh, statue you might be able to see right up the end there. Um, and heaven knows why I named it that. They were looking for a more royal name for it at some point. So St. Wenceslas got it. Um, and up there is the, 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 the National Museum for. Uh, uh, for the Czech Republic and as you can see you, know, you might be able to see still they've got the Ukraine flag up there and it's, it's less than a square and more of a more of a boulevard really um, but it is quite cool I think this middle of the middle of the street it was all the way up there and yeah once again as the border between Newtown which I believe is that side and Old Town I think. I might be wrong on that one. Could could be completely wrong. But that would be my estimation anyway. So we're going to continue wandering and eventually we're going to end up back at the hostel to relax for a little bit before going out for our check evening. Hey team, so I've made it up to Letna Park, which is known as one of the many high points in Prague you get a really good view from here obviously there's a few points that are higher like the radio tower over there behind me over there there's another tower which will give you a pretty good view but seriously have a look at this <clears throat> that's more than just a little bit pretty from up here I kind of wish I could go up here up to the metronome just to get that little bit of an extra extra viewpoint but really is quite stunning from up here if we come around this side we can see a couple of bridges including St Charles Bridge which is that famous one we walked along or we have walked along before but we can see St Charles Bridge just ahead of us there along with a fair few bridges down that side this sort of looks to be old town and you can see off in the distance there Newtown with all the new buildings 
uh, over there. Obviously, a whole bunch of boats and stuff on the river. But yeah, it really is stunning, isn't it? But um, for now, we're gonna walk around a wee bit more, a little bit more. Uh, maybe find a lime and get home and have that, have that shower. Maybe, maybe have a swim, because this hostel has a lot, quite a lovely pool. I'm quite high in chlorine, so it sinks quite quickly. But um, it's definitely good with the heat that we're having over here in Prague. So, uh, yep, I'm going to go do that. And like, like I keep saying in this video, we have our, our Czech evening later on. Which apparently has like Czech dancing and food and drink and stuff. So, I'm looking forward to that. That'll be quite fun. And then, yeah, it'll be off to Vienna tomorrow. Which should be a good time. So one last thing while I'm at, letting the green, uh, letting the park, if you will. Just look at this again. Such a lovely view of the city there behind me. Such a beautiful, beautiful city. It is really nice. So many different styles of architecture, so many spires. It is known as the city of spires just because of how many there are and it just looks nice doesn't it it really does just look lovely even from up here it's lovely walking through it it's lovely looking down on it it's just a great really really beautiful city probably the prettiest i've been to so far on this trip although dresden was up there as well i have to admit and of course, I did say Amsterdam was very pretty, and that's still no lie. But yeah, this place is absolutely breathtaking. Well, right, so I'm almost, well, I'm about 1500 meters away from the hostel now. Um, and this has been a day of exploring park. Uh, it's been quite cool. I've had the Sex Machines Museum, I've had the Banksy exhibit, I've had Letna Park, I've had Wenceslas Square. Took off a whole bunch of stuff that I wanted to do, which away at Dolnik, which I didn't show you guys, which is almost like a donut, and inside they put whipped cream and fruit and all sorts of stuff, which is really lovely, really really nice. Um, yeah, I didn't end up going to the KGB museum. It was a bit, a bit out of the way, and I couldn't really be bothered. And like I said I wanted to be back to the hostel at about this time, so I've kind of worked it pretty well up to this point so I've got about two hours or so now before our traditional check evening um, which I am looking forward to it's good to get immersed even more in, into the culture and I feel as though this kind of thing really helps do that but again I've said it so much throughout this throughout this video um, but Prague is just stunning it is beautiful and a lot of it is original as well because um, it, Prague managed to escape most of the bombings in World War II so most of it is the original buildings which is fantastic unlike Dresden where everything was uh, you know within about 40 years old but yep I'm gonna head back into the hostel now have a shower I think and then relax for a while 